It's time for the sandbox news. This week there are a ton of fixes and editor updates. Baked volumetric fog finally works now. The collision system is getting reworked. There are a ton of updates to the asset browser and hammer editor. There are also some new changes to the character. There are new animations and new gloves. There's a new swim idle animation. So swimming in sandbox is actually really buggy right now. But if you stand still while you're swimming, you'll see, <laughs> you'll see the glasses. You'll see the character moving his hands around like he's treading water. Water is really buggy right now. There are also new sit animations. Now, these have been in the game for a while. However, they weren't actually used by anything. So now I'm showing it off in the animation graph editor. When I adjust the sit pose slider, the character will blend between different sit positions. And the ability to change the height is really neat too. So now the character can actually sit on chairs with different heights without having their legs either floating or clipping through the ground. There's also a sitting on the ground animation set. So here we can see the different poses. It's very interesting and very cool. Now, I don't think anything is using these yet other than my NPC zombie game. There are new special operatives gloves. So we can see them on the character here. They are black special operatives gloves. Now you can become the true special operative. Baked volumetric fog is now fixed. A large part of why some sandbox maps have very terrible frame rate is because of the volumetric fog. It really drains your frame rate, even though you wouldn't think it would. All volumetric fog in maps had to be dynamic. Now Default Source 2 actually supports baking volumetric fog, however, it hasn't worked since the very start. And now it's been fixed, so you can see I'm only getting less than 30 frames per second on this haunted forest map but with the baked fog, I assume I would be getting more. I didn't actually bake fog on that map because it turns out the fixed baked dynamic fog actually isn't fixed. It's actually really broken. I'm here on Cursed Shaft where I compiled the map with baked fog and you can see it just doesn't look right. It's really weird and glitched. Now I'm not entirely sure what's going on with the fog. I don't know why it's acting up, but I'm sure we'll see it fixed in the future. Baking volumetric fog has a huge increase on performance. So previously on this map, I was only getting about 80 frames per second, but now when I'm not recording, I'm getting between 100 to 120 FPS. So that's a huge increase. I'm here on office and we can see it's so foggy. This is so strange. If I go outside, we can see the fog gets even thicker. It's so weird and interesting. Also, it looks like the trees have been fully fixed now. I think the issue was you had to recompile the map and re-upload it. And it looks like that's been done on Office here. The collision system for Sandbox is getting reworked. So previously, I think there were four or even more things that influenced collisions. It was so strange. There were collision groups, collision layers, physics groups, entity tags, and probably some other things that I'm forgetting. All those weird valve systems were overly complicated and they didn't really make much sense. All that's being condensed into this new collision system using tags. So here we can see a preview from Gary. This is not in the game yet. We can see there's going to be a new project settings tab in the sandbox editor. And currently it's just going to have collisions and the collision matrix. So the collision matrix represents everything that happens with physics. So this does not affect traces like bullets. This grid is specifically for the physics engine. When you're firing a bullet, you can check the tags in the code. However, things that use the physics engine, like the player and props, will check this collision matrix. So on the left here, we can see the different tags that you can set on an object. So in this example, we can see if an object has the solid tag, it would collide with everything except for trigger and solid. There's no specified interaction between solid and fooey fooey fooey. So it would use the default interaction here, which would be collide. We can see solid is set to always collide with other solid objects and it's set to collide as a trigger. Now I assume how this works is it lets the object know that it's collided with a trigger. However, it doesn't actually do any physics interactions with it. The object will pass right through it. Here we can see a video of different triggers being set. You can see he's setting the pickup trigger to collide with nothing by default and collide as a trigger with only the player. You can also see we can add our own tags and remove tags. So previously this was a weird 
hard-coded system where you couldn't actually choose which types interact with which. You just had to deal with how it was hard-coded since at least Half-Life 2. Valve might have even used this system in Half-Life 1, I'm not sure. It's a very old system and now it's being updated to actually be pleasant to use and make sense in Sandbox. The Sandbox editor has gotten a ton of improvements, so we can see the new asset browser is what you'll want to use by default. The old asset browser, now known as Legacy Asset Browser, actually doesn't appear by default anymore. So you have to manually turn it on if you want to use this. I'm not sure if this will get removed at some point. However, they're trying to work on this new asset browser and make it actually decent. So I'm going to try to use this new asset browser now. Last I tried, this new asset browser was really bad and it crashed a lot and was missing a bunch of features. There's still some getting used to and there are still some issues with this new asset browser, but I'm sure we'll see it improved as time goes on. Hammer Editor has also gotten a ton of improvements. So now if you want to, you can use the scroll wheel to adjust your movement speed. Personally, I actually have one of those infinite scroll wheel mouses, so I like to just flick my mouse to move around. Apparently there are new helpers for the physics constraints, so I haven't used this yet. Oh, so if I click on here, I can move the hinge location. Now, to be honest, I don't actually remember how it looked previously. Here we can see this is how it looks now. So probably an improvement. There have been some improvements to the windows. So things have been condensed. Some of the extra text from the top bar up here was removed. There was an extra toolbar on the different viewports and that's been condensed into this button. In the outliner, we can see things have been condensed. So here's what it looked like previously. There was a bunch of wasted space and now there's little icons instead. I've continued to work on my NPC zombie horde game. This week I reworked the weapon system. So now there's a flashlight and you can do a melee shove. You can see if I shove a zombie back, he'll get shoved backwards and he'll get stunned a little bit. There's no animation for this yet, but it's functional. I've also set up a new weapon system. So now you can have one sidearm weapon that's either a pistol or the magnum or melee weapon, and it has infinite ammo. You can also have two primary weapons. So if I go to the loot box, which has the weird glitched outline, and I break it, you can see I got a magnum, and I can swap my pistol out for it. So you can see it has the melee bash, and it has different properties. For example, it can one-shot zombies. However, the accuracy decreases a lot if you're moving or if you shoot quickly. So you really have to stand still if you want to be accurate with this. If you're moving and firing quickly, you're not gonna hit anything. Here's another loot box, let's see what I get. So I got an ammo box. If I had a primary weapon and I pressed E on it, I would get ammo. I don't actually have a primary weapon yet, so I have to find one. Aha, I found an SMG. You can see the outline is so weird in sandbox right now. It's so like weird and glitchy. Anyways, if I pick it up, you can see uh, I have it here and I can do the mail I shove. And if I go in third person, there's uh, animation for it too. If I open up another loot box, hopefully I'll get a different primary weapon. Uh, I actually got a trip mine, which it goes in the grenade slot on number four. Here we can see I got a crossbow. So this goes in my other primary weapon slot. And if there was another weapon on the ground, I wouldn't be able to pick it up because I already have my two primary weapons. I'd have to drop this one. So very cool, very interesting. Let's see, this is the animation for the shotgun melee attack. Now currently you can't press E to pick up weapons. I've coded it. However, I think with the current collision system, I might have to make the player collide with the weapon in order to have them pick it up. And I don't want to do that, so I think I'm just going to wait for the new collision system to be implemented before I make that possible. I made a new player incapacitation system, so now if a player is hurt, they'll go down on the ground and they'll have to be saved by pressing E to pick them up. Now, this just happens instantly currently, so there's no animation for it. And currently I have it set up so you can only go down one time before you're permanently dead. So here's what happens if I go down. Yeah. It plays a uh, sound effect and then I'm stuck on the ground. I can't move. I'm stuck using the new sit animation and all I can do is shoot and either wait for the round to end so I can scan back up or wait for a player to come over and press E to pick me up. If you go down again, you'll die and uh, Actually, it looks like it gives you an error, so I'll have to fix that. And you turn into a spectator until the round ends when you can respawn. I also added a new spectator camera. Now, this is kind of weird on a bot, 
but it works properly on a regular player. You can see I'm spectating them while they try to survive the NPC zombie horde. So this is pretty crazy, pretty interesting, pretty thrilling. Shimona, the main person from Eagle One, made a new map. It's called Thornium. This map is actually insane. It's set inside of a weird sci-fi space station, I think. And this map is entirely made out of developer texture. Now, this map looks fantastic. Look at all the detail. There are no pre-made models here. It's all geometry made in the level editor along with developer textures. This map is incredibly detailed. There's so much stuff going on and it's so cool. I was totally blown away the first time I saw this map. It's actually insane. So here I'm going into the central core room and oh, just look at all the detail, wow. I think this is meant to be a reactor of some kind. Uh, big sci-fi space reactor, let's see. Core reactor, yeah. There's a vehicle hangar with an uh, interesting sci-fi vehicle. And the capsule room, which contains these weird, interesting green capsules. Now, I'm not entirely sure what these are meant to be, but they are definitely very interesting. Here's an overview of the map. Now, this is just so crazy. The lighting on this map is so cool. I don't know how to describe it. It's so cool. It's so, it's so good. I actually recorded my initial impressions, my very first time looking at this map, and I was totally blown away. I might upload that as a video soon, so keep an eye out for that. Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, and thank you to my Patreon supporters.